We're at the Securing Sport Conference. We've talked about a lot about uh, integrity in sport, but your particular interest would be integrity in the protection of children, perhaps the education of children coming into sport. Yeah, for me, integrity for young people, um, education for young people, safeguarding for young people is, is a missing piece of the equation. Whenever you hear people within sports, within elite sports, talk about integrity, what they really mean is anti-doping and anti-gambling or match fixing. Those are the two aspects they're talking about. And I think there is a responsibility within sports to develop the, the whole athlete. And that doesn't take away from their ability to perform on the field or on the pitch or whatever else. But there's a bigger responsibility than simply these measures that are designed to stop catastrophe. There are measures that also augment the individual, augment the reputation of the, of the sport. And as sport gets richer and more sophisticated, do you think it's lagging behind a little in those sort of measures? Yeah, hugely so. I mean, I mean sport, elite sport is, is remarkable in its ability to not innovate. You see this in football with the adaptation of goal line technology 20 years after it was invented. Um, and after numerous occasions where it, it, would, it would have been required. And that's, mo that's really the most benign level. The only area where you see any competition in this arms race of integrity and principle versus not is in doping or anti-doping. Uh, and I just think that same vigor, that same fervor should be put into making sure that coaches are better educated, uh, more dynamic, emotionally literate, not stuck in the dark ages, which is where I think many are, uh, and to make sure that the environment that young people are entering into, whilst challenging physically, mentally, emotionally, shouldn't be one that damages them. And I think sport at the Elite Ten has abdicated that responsibility so far. Well, what experiences have you got that have led you to these sort of conclusions and to, to feel so passionate about these issues? I, I suppose for me, I played professional sport in four different countries, including the NBA, in America, and all the lessons I learned while I was an athlete were just terrible, terrible lessons. They were, they were lessons that had me believing that somehow I was, I was entitled to not have to worry about the rules that everybody else had to abide by, that I was entitled to things for nothing when other people had to work for them. Um, I was entitled to treatment as if royalty regardless of my actual playing ability. These are terrible, terrible lessons that you learn in sport. I also watched how certain people within sport were damaged by the way they were treated by coach. And we're only now starting to see that manifest in the professional levels, where you're seeing NBA players who are leaving the game because of depression. You're seeing that in many other sports at the moment. Players who are being psychologically damaged by the coaching they're receiving. And at the young end, let me tell you, the story there is horrific. Undereducated, maybe willing coaches who, who, are, who coach as if they're infallible and as if they're trying to live out their fantasies in, in the lives of young people. It's an incredibly dangerous scenario. And I think changes in the elite end could really filter down and, and help make young people's experience better, help make our athletes better for us by the time they get to be professionals. I mean, it's a, it's a story that goes all over the world where you say the NBA working at grassroots level in, in the States. In Europe, it would be soccer coaches and the shouting from the touch. It's about respect, isn't it? As, as Gerard Houllier said in there, it's about respect for, you, for young people respecting their coaches, but also for the coaches to respect the young, the young athletes. Yes, uh, I think coaching in the past has always been the domain of men. It still is, for the most part, for no good reason, I would add. Um, but those men have come with medieval ideas. They've, they really have evolved so little over the last 40 years that there is no other scenario. And, and let me, to give him his due, someone like Alex Ferguson, who I think is a remarkable individual. There, are, there is no other job he could do as a manager. He couldn't manage people at a safe store because his style of management would not, we would not tolerate that in any other environment. If he was a French teacher in a school, he would last five minutes. The environment, the, the techniques, the coercion, the, the passive aggressiveness, the overt aggressiveness that we allow in sports coaching 
is something that we've given a pass in sports, but we would never allow another environment. I talk to parents on sidelines as they watch their children being abused by their coaches, verbally abused. And I just tap them on the shoulder and I say, if that coach was a French teacher, what would you be doing right now? And invariably the answer is I would be down there ripping that person to shreds. But because it's sports, somehow standing six inches from an eight-year-old, yelling so loudly that your spittle is landing on their face is acceptable. You've got to change. And that starts at the top as well as trying to educate from the bottom.